I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to find meme coins on Dex Screener, and I'm gonna do a full tutorial on how I use this to identify these undervalued altcoins. Because as you can see right here, meme coins happen to be doing the best. So people that hate on meme coins, they say it's a scam. It's ridiculous. Why are you buying a coin that's a meme? Well, if we look at year to date, it happens to be that all of the greatest and most lucrative coins happen to be a meme coin. So using Dex Screener would get you far ahead because this is like the interface before coin market cap. You could essentially find all the new gems before they even go on coin market cap on deck screener. So before they go mainstream is this is where you're going to find everything. Very interesting tool to use, but you will get scammed. I repeat, if you do not follow the parameters that I'm going to set in place for you, you can lose all of your money. People gamble in cryptocurrency and I've developed a refined strategy and I've been using it for eight years. So I want to show you this strategy so you don't get scammed yourself, but you could potentially find some meme coins. So I'm going to get straight to it. So my favorite part that you guys have to understand is the most important is liquidity. Liquidity runs the entire market. I don't care who you're listening to. Liquidity is more important than price. If you have people that are worth a billion dollars worth of Shiba Inu coin and they can't sell it, then literally, is it really a, a billion dollars? The liquidity is like a bank. People don't understand this concept, but if the liquidity pool has $2 million in it and they are holding 100 million of the token, they can't sell 100 million. So it's not really worth 100 million. You essentially have to have more money in the liquidity pool for the potential sell. A cryptocurrency liquidity pool is a collection of funds locked in a smart contract, providing liquidity for trading pairs and decentralized exchanges. High liquidity is essential for selling large amounts because it ensures that there are enough funds available to absorb the sale without drastically impacting the price. Conversely, when a project has low liquidity, even small buy orders can cause significant price increases due to the limited supply of tokens available. So if you want to make sure that a project's not a scam, you have to make sure it has good liquidity. And at the same time, if you want to make sure a project pumps really fast, you want to make sure it doesn't have that much liquidity. The more liquidity it has, the safer it is and the slower it moves up in price. If you have a sweet spot, and I'll explain to you how to calculate the sweet spot for liquidity, you can have a small amount of liquidity and when a big whale buys in, he will skyrocket the price. That sweet spot is everything. And this is what brings essentially safety to the meme coins you're buying because a lot of these meme coins are anonymous. Just think about it for a second. The way I gauge safety in legit coin projects like altcoins and infrastructure and DeFi, the way I gauge that safety is looking at the team. I look into the team, see how much experience they have. In meme coins, there is no team. So you essentially have to base that by something else, right? How do you know if a coin is safe? Not market cap. You could have a coin with a massive market cap, but a very small amount of liquidity that's basically a scam. Let me show you. The formula for market cap of a crypto is a current price per token times the circulating supply. But see, they automatically program the circulating supply in the coin. They have an initial supply that they essentially determine with the white paper when they launch their project. They're like, this is going to be the initial supply. And they also control the tokenomics. So they control how much of the supply is distributed, AKA they control the circulating supply. So there's been a lot of coins that have shot up on CoinMarketCap's website because they fake the circulating supply. They literally fake it. They fake how much circulating supply is out there and they artificially pump the market cap of their coin. Then a whole bunch of people are like, wow, this coin's high market cap. They start buying in and that pumps the price. So it's not always a bad thing, but I don't look at market cap as a determinant for safety. And I'll explain more of that later. But what I want to do is I want to really make a good decision on understanding the layer in which I want to buy my coin. So if I'm looking for a meme coin or whatever the case is, you have to pick the right layer. You can't just start investing in a whole bunch of different layers. This is my opinion. You want to pick the layer with the most potential. And we'll have other videos for that, so make sure to subscribe for the channel. But long story short, I believe the best layer to buy anything right now is base. So you start there, okay? And you have to make sure that the base liquidity is high as well, right? So DeFi Llama, 
will give you that data. If you go to DeFi Llama, you can see all the chains with the most liquidity. Again, liquidity is the answer, guys. If you want to know safety, if you want to know price increase, you have to make sure that there's money from the chain itself coming on to the project that you're buying. People don't comprehend this, but let me show you. Let's say hypothetically you have a layer one, right? And then we have a layer two. Each of those have a liquidity on both of them. There's an amount of money. Let's say hypothetically for random numbers, this one has 200 million. And then this one has only 50 million. If you're buying coins that were created off the layers, right? Let's say you're buying a project and it's created off the layers. The potential for the 200 million to go into your project is way higher, literally four times higher than the potential for the 50 million to go into your project. So you want to find layers that have absurd liquidity. You want to find good sweet spots. So understanding the liquidity of the layer is also very important. Let's go to L2 Heartbeat. The reason why I like base is because they're not number one and they'll eventually be number one, meaning they're not overvalued. They're a little bit undervalued and the potential behind it is absurd. I've already done a crazy amount of research on this. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but I believe this is the best place with the best liquidity. We have 7.72 billion. So you don't want to go on something like this. $51 million. The chances of your meme coin doing well is slim to none. You want to find things that have a lot of liquidity. This is so important. And it's like one of the most important variables for any meme coin because their whole goal is to essentially get adoption and a whole bunch of people to buy into their coin. So they want to make sure they have a good investments, right? They want to make sure that there's a liquidity for people to buy into. So base to me is the best. And again, my goal is to teach you what matters in this tutorial. So this is what matters, right? There's obviously a whole bunch of different things, but what I actually use it for is this. So if we go to base, once we understand the layer, the second thing is to understand the biggest decentralized exchanges. So as you can see at the top here, we have liquidity for the entire protocol, but we also have liquidity for the decentralized exchanges. I want you to think about DEXs or decentralized exchanges like the marketplace. So let's say this is the entire base chain. There's going to be a whole bunch of little marketplaces within the base chain. So you have all these different marketplaces. And again, you guessed it. You want to get the marketplace with the most liquidity. Find the coins that have liquidity pairs on the marketplace with the most liquidity. <laughs> so you guys hopefully understand what I'm saying is you want to invest where the money is at. Nobody wants to be in these, these dry pools, right? Think of it like a desert. Like there's these pools of money. That's where everybody wants to stay around because that's where the life is. It's the same thing in cryptocurrency. There's these dry places that you do not want to be a part. Those are where you get scammed and where there's no liquidity or no new investors. That's where you lose all your money. And that's how you avoid scams as well. Pay attention. So if we look at the top here, we see Aerodrome is a top decentralized exchange. This is a top decentralized exchange. This is where I'm going to start looking into meme coins. OK, now the next step is within the meme coins, you need to find a nice balance. So essentially what you want to do is find something that doesn't have too much liquidity. Remember, if it has too much, it doesn't really have room for growth when it comes to price, right? Because you want to find that sweet spot to where there's like a, a good amount to where you know it's not a scam. That's kind of the gist here is have a good amount, you know for a fact it's not a scam, but then make sure it doesn't have too much so that the price can actually increase. That's the sweet spot, right? So if we come over here, I like to kind of filter this. So we see that we have 149 million in Aerodrome and we can keep going down and kind of look at the top meme coins, right? So I don't know if this is a meme coin, but I'm kind of just looking. It looks like Brett and Mog have the highest amount for specific meme coins, right? You guys see it right there, Brett and Mog. These have the highest amounts. That's 2.6, 2.3 million. Now, personally, I'm a huge advocate for Brett for this reason. It looks like it's the best meme coin in base, right? So as base gains adoption, it's such a simple investment plan. As base dominates, which we know for a fact, base is going to pass Arbitrum. It's going to be the number one layer two in the entire market. All of that new liquidity is going to flood into base and go into the top meme coins. But let's say hypothetically we were on base because being that base is relatively new, these two meme coins are dominating right now. But let's look at another chain. Let's look at something that's a little bit older that has more liquidity, which, for example, is Ethereum. So if we take a look at Ethereum and we click liquidity, you can see that we have look at Pepe. $41.1 million worth of liquidity. And we're looking at all the decentralized exchanges, but the biggest one is Uniswap. So if I click Uniswap, we see $41.1 million in liquidity. That's a lot of liquidity. And they're actually number one, which is crazy. We see Mogcoin here, 
right? We see Neuro, some of the biggest meme coins, right? Now look at the example of liquidity that they have. They're in the 12 millions, 20 millions, 40 millions. This is a perfect example of something having too much liquidity. It's relatively safe. Like you won't have a hard time with these coins. They're going to increase a lot and drop a lot, but I'm looking for things like around the three to $5 million liquidity level. So this would be my spot here. And it's interesting. I had some people in my group talking about MAGA, which is like obviously the Trump meme coin. And if Trump gets elected, this could do very well. Right. And so the next step is to really look into the fundamentals of the coin. And I have a complete checklist strategy um, that you guys can get for free on my website. I'm going to leave the link down in the description below and you can check that out. It's a complete training and everything. But when we go into the actual fundamentals of the coin, that's a completely different topic. Let me show you some other features that this website has to offer. So as you can see right here, there's a filter feature. So if you click filters, you could actually filter out for the sweet spot. So for example, I could look at things from 1 million to like 5 million. And then you could also do things like market cap, which I don't really recommend, but you could also look at things that, for example, I usually only invest in coins that have been out since this bull cycle. So I like coins that are just recently made. So for example, I could look at the pair age and I could look at the number of hours. Now, I don't know how many hours is a year. Let's ask ChatGPT. How many hours has it been since the start of 2024? It's been approximately 7,097 hours. So let's just do 7,000 hours, right? And so it's a minimum of 7,000 hours old. So that means that we're looking for projects with the liquidity of 1 million to 5 million, right? And then we're looking for an age of 7,000 hours roughly since the beginning of the year. And then we can kind of look through this a little bit, right? And there's really nothing else I want to look at. You could look at 24 hour volume if you want. So you could see things that just recently got a lot of volume and volume basically means, you know, transactions, like a lot of transactions. You could look into that if you want, but I'm just going to apply this for now so we can get very broad. Now we have a good list. Now, for some reason it's showing 80, okay, that's 88 million market cap. Now we have a list and this is where I'll sit there and I'll actually dissect it with something called fundamental analysis. So fundamental analysis is essentially comparing and contrasting the team, the stats, right? The stats says the coin, there's like stats, like their marketing abilities, their liquidity, their team, how legit is their team? How good is their you know, narrative? Like there's literal stats and you can compare and contrast them to kind of figure out which one is the most fundamentally sound. And I could sit there and run these through a list. And I have done this before, but obviously we're looking for meme coins. So in this case, we're gonna look like just, I, I don't see that many meme coins, maybe Jesus coin. I see uh, Grok, I believe that's a meme coin. We do see some here, but you kind of, in this case, you're just going to have to use a technique. So basically you command click. So command click will essentially just open it inside of a new tab. And so what we're looking at again is liquidity pools within to one to $5 million range on Ethereum specifically, right? And we're looking for the meme coins. And then I'll just kind of run through this. And I'll look for different meme coins. I'll look for the legitimate you know, projects. I'll compare and contrast them. Now, there's a couple other things you can look at, which is very interesting. We never had this before, but now they have it. You could actually look at the liquidity providers. And that's for another tutorial, but I can essentially use a software called Arkham. And in Arkham, I can follow the liquidity providers to see how sketchy they are. Are they pumping, dumping coins? I can essentially make a transaction path on the liquidity providers to see if they're scammers or not, right? And this will add to the credibility side because it's important to protect your funds, right? And I'll look into those details. Another thing I'll be looking at is top traders, right? So how much money are they making? What's their P&L? I, I just look for kind of like sketchy, fishy stuff. Like I've seen people, you know, start, for example, with a dollar and make like $20 million. That's sketchy. Like there's obviously something wrong there. I'll look for red flags, right? You could go through the transaction history, but it's pretty irrelevant. And then you could also look for the number of holders, right? This holder has 283 million, okay? And the liquidity is 4.4 million. So this is the perfect example of what I was explaining to you. He cannot sell 283 million. He can't, because if he did, he would destroy the price of his coin. The liquidity pool is only 4.4 million. So he's not really worth 283.3 million. This is just a number that's artificially calculated. Same thing with this person, same thing with this person. So what you could do also, if you are actually watching this coin and you wanna buy it, you could put notifications on these addresses through Arkham 
to see if they're going to sell. And if these people sell, you probably want to get out, right? Very important because they could just destroy the entire liquidity pool. And again, obviously, there's so many more features. We're going to do multiple tutorials on this actual software, but I want to show you things that are actually important to me that are really important. I'm just trying to show you what I use to actually analyze these coins, right? But just to finish everything up, the last things I'll usually use is I'm not, first off, I'm not looking at price. It's kind of irrelevant with low liquidity projects. It's extremely irrelevant, but this is like a trading view. So you could look at that if you want to, like, look at that. that how do you do technical analysis on that? It doesn't make any sense. But what I'll look at specifically is I'll add these things to watch list. So once I see a coin project that looks pretty good, I'm gonna add a whole bunch of them to the watch list. And I could even set up alerts on the liquidity providers if I wanted to, right? I wanna add a whole bunch of them to a watch list. And then again, I have a checklist system to where I compare and contrast all the specific variables of the coin and I score it one out of 10. And out of those one out of 10, right? I'll it'll basically filter out to a hand select of sound, fundamental, perfect liquidity type of projects that basically motivate me to make investment decisions. Now, I want to talk about gambling because I know a lot of people in crypto gamble. This is what you call a refined system. It's important because if you don't follow specific reasons to why you're buying a coin, and if they're not refined, and if you don't have a predictable and repeatable system, you are gambling, which is exactly what you don't want to do. You're making investment decisions, buy and sells based off of random information. Do not do this, right? So again, I do have a link in a pinned comment below that you guys can take advantage of. It's an entire system. It's basically an entire checklist where you look into specific variables. So you'll look at liquidity, you'll look at the team, you'll look at the narrative economics behind the coin, you'll look at the timeline price analysis of a coin, you'll look into the tokenomics, that's one element of it. You'll look into the product market fit. I mean, there's just so many different elements and definitions for how to actually research that in a project. And when you find that list, this is a good initial, this software is amazing for like that initial research. Once you get that list, you have to do fundamental analysis to understand which coins would do well. Very important. So definitely head down low to the pinned comment and take advantage of that. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. This is a simple tutorial for anyone to figure out exactly how to use deck screener. This is part one. We'll be doing more parts to this tutorial and the specific nature of these are to basically find the greatest coins. I don't want to just go through features of it. The best way to learn this software is to actually find the coins as you do it. So if you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Catch you guys later. Peace out.